Uh, in Tombechle, uh, we had a nice gains yesterday. We opened stronger this morning. The JSC up by about a third of a percent just after the opening. We've retraced all of these gains, trading into the red this afternoon. Why the, why the turnaround? Um, hi, Stephen. I think it's mainly because, um, you know, there's no data coming out um, today, so there's no impotence and no, nothing to really push the market um, all over the world, um, US, UK, as well as locally. There's no new economic data that well, uh, the markets would perhaps react to. And also, you know, I think um, the island issue has also left a little bit of uh, bad taste in people's mouths. Um, although there will be, there are plans of a bailout. I think a lot of people are still not sure, not wanting really to put any money on the table. Also, it is Friday, so just before the weekend, not wanting to put any, to put any money on the table. And also, I think um, the bad news out of China today was that um, they will be implementing some measures to cool down the property sector in China. And uh, I think that just, you know, left a little, a little bit of um, uh, of a bad taste, I think, in the markets today. And and maybe some players just um, taking some profit before the weekend. I mean, although Ireland looks set to accept some sort of package from the EU and the IMF, which uh, I think could total as much as 90 billion euros, <laughs> I've heard, uh, it looks like there are still some risks to this, though, whether Ireland accepts some of the conditions, I suppose. Yes, I think so. I think, uh, you know, those, they're afraid of austerity measures that um, um, or, or the, uh, that would be part of the conditions for this bailout from the EU or the IMF. Um, they, they're afraid also, you know, I think um, uh, they, they, they may want to, they may uh, be um, forced to increase their low corporate tax rates in Ireland, which is a great business pool um, from all over the world for them. So I think it's just, just um, uh, fears of it may, uh, being, being more co um, incompetitive, uh, uncompetitive, I beg your pardon. And um, I think, uh, you know, a lot of things to, uh, for the Irish government to consider um, before taking this bailout. So it, it is poised um, at the moment to go ahead. And um, we do expect some kind of um, assistance there. But um, I think it may um, take a little bit longer. And the risk is them saying that, you know what, um, these conditions are a little bit too strenuous for them. Well, uh, while well, we have equities putting back a little bit today and the Rand ironically is heading the other direction, trading around 694, 695 against the dollar. So some strength coming through for the Rand. Yes, uh, some strength coming through, through um, for sure. Um, I think also that's mainly on dollar weakness also. And um, we see the euro um, is up quite strongly also today. Um, you know, the, the, the positive side, I suppose, um, of the island um, uh, debacle. And I think, uh, you know, some players maybe, um, you know, using um, the, the, the fact that um, it will go ahead, um, or there will be some kind of bail, um, a bailout plan um, as um, a reason to take on more risk. So we're seeing a nice improvement there. We've seen it translated into the commodities also. And uh, yesterday, is um, 50 percent, uh, beg your pardon, 50 basis points um, cut yesterday. Um, really, there was just um, no reaction to it because uh, it was already priced into the market. The yields in South Africa still remain attractive even despite that 50 basis point cut, don't they? Yes, they certainly do. And I think, you know, that would, um, it's still part of the Reserve Bank's worry. Um, um, Ms. Marcus yesterday did say that, uh, you know, should there be uh, further rand strength, should uh, inflation surprise on the downside, and should, should the general economy in South Africa not move at the, um, at the speed or at the rate that they would prefer to see it, then there may be room for further cuts. But um, yes, uh, you know, South Africa still remains attractive compared to the rest of the world. Our yields are far higher, and um, we'll, we will see more um, foreign players and more foreign inflows into the country. Well, although we had a positive reaction from retailers to that rate cut, and also today we have MassMart still one of the few shares gaining on the top 40, banks have reacted quite negatively. We, we had uh, Standard Bank first strand down quite sharply yesterday, first strand down again today, and also on Wednesday we, we had first strand down while the other banks were rallying. Why are the banks not reacting to this rate cut? I think mainly, Stephen, it's because, um, you know, um, the, a, a declining interest rate cycle is not really good news for the bank because it affects their margins. And, uh, you know, you mentioned First Rand and Standard Bank there. I think, you know, before First Rand was uh, preferred because um, of the non-interest um, dependency, um, you know, um, or their non-interest revenue, let me put it that way. And uh, whereas now, Standard Bank, with the cost cutting that they've had to do on their side, they may be, perhaps be perceived as, um, as the better of the banks. And uh, I think we may see some switching as we've done in a few uh, over the past few days from First Rand into Standard Bank, um, you know, because they are operating on a lower cost environment um, than, the, the, than their peers in the market. And I think that's mainly what we've, what we've seen. Um, Reserve Bank Governor also saying yesterday that, um, uh, you know, the, the banks don't, don't seem to be passing on the, 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 the cuts um, that we've had in interest rates so far to the final consumer. And I think it's just them protecting their interest rates margins and, uh, and trying to stay afloat um, with the current costs that they've got. But um, therefore, you know, 
Standard Bank um, does seem to be the better of the lot. I saw this morning that it's actually, it is down with the rest of the banks, but um, better of the banks. Well, a couple of shares that have stood out on the top 40. Vodacom, the best performer this morning, was up by 1.8% at one stage. Uh, well, also up yesterday, up by about 2.9% yesterday. What's been driving the Vodacom for, uh, share price here? Yeah, I think uh, Vodafone came out saying that um, they are going to be going more aggressively into Africa and uh, will be doing that through Vodacom. And I think, uh, you know, uh, you, that was a very good um, sentiment, to, sentiment right now towards the share because, I mean, since they're listing, they've really hovered around the 55 Rand level. And since May this year, we've actually seen that improve quite a bit. I think the prospects of Vodacom are improving. Um, you know, the data prospects, um, because voice um, in, the, uh, in the telecom sector is no longer a competitive edge, is now moving more towards data and um, I think um, you know going into Africa if they pursue a data strategies as is expected and um, we should see some um, great improvements there um, you know I think also the, the other point to make is that Vodacom, Vodafone is a strong uh, backer for Vodacom and a lot of portfolio managers perhaps didn't have that stock um, you know in their portfolios while it was moving sideways but now are going in there with the expectations that this Vod uh, with Vodafone's um, um, strategy in Africa is going to improve Vodacom. Uh, we had that share gaining 5.7% yesterday, so the top, the top of the top 40 yesterday. Uh, a little bit flatter today, but really not pulling back much from those gains. And I mean, this stock just continues to, to climb at new time highs every, every time it moves higher. Sure, yes, absolutely, Stephen. I mean, the stock has climbed so much this year. It's up uh, around about 20, between 20 and 22 percent um, year to date. And uh, their core headline earnings, the guidance for core headline earnings yesterday was between 25 and 35 percent. Now, um, Tencent, the, you know, the, the internet story in China is still very strong. They've got new games. Mail.ru is listing, oh, there's an IPO in December. Uh, I think it's about December that we're going to be seeing that. And it's just fundamentally the, st the stock is gone. It's so strong. And really, it has been a darling of the stock exchange year to date. Uh, SAB Miller pulling back slightly today but that was after gaining 3.8% yesterday, yesterday on the back of those first half results which really came in a little bit better than the market had expected. Yes, yeah, very, very well. Um, I think, uh, you know, we saw volume, um, volumes increases, volume sales increases, um, costs um, were reduced where possible, and also price, um, you know, they took advantage of price um, uh, increases where possible. So, yes, they're very well poised. The emerging market has been really good to, uh, to um, SAB, and we've seen w wonderful increases there. And I think their guidance also has been really good um, um, so far. So that's why the, the share has gone up quite a bit, and um, it's a very good showing for SAB.